Hi everyone, we're going to get started in just a minute. Uh, we wanted to thank you for joining us today for this unique marketing webinar on what appears to be the last nice day. Um, so thank you for staying inside with us uh, when that sun is calling. We've got Allison Lane with us today, who is a Maine SBDC business advisor with CEI. And she is going to be giving you some suggestions, some tips, some general helpful information about what this unique holiday season is going to look like from a marketing standpoint. Um, so definitely let us know if you have any questions. Um, please introduce yourself in the chat. Let us know where you're coming from, maybe what industry you're in. If you want to drop a link to your store or business, feel free to share that. Um, you're welcome to enter questions as we go along. Um, Allison also usually stops a couple times, see if anybody has questions, and then we always have time at the end as well. Uh, so without further ado, I will hand it over to Allison. All right. Well, thank you all for joining us this afternoon. Um, if you have been on any of our webinars before, you've likely heard us say that we do not have a crystal ball. And unfortunately, that is most definitely the case with this holiday season. But today, we're going to jump in a little bit. We're going to talk about what we know, what we can assume, and what are some things that you can do to cope with the uncertainty that it, it is what it is. So I guess my first piece of advice is to accept that uncertainty, embrace it when possible, and try to cut yourself some slack this holiday season. So as Kelsey said, my name is Allison Lane. I'm a business advisor with Maine Small Business Development Center at CEI. I'll remind you all once again, if you're not familiar with our program, that a big part of what we offer is one-on-one -on -one general business advising to folks running and starting their own businesses uh, across the state of Maine. So if you'd like to dig in deeper to this topic that we're gonna talk about today and talk specifically about your business or your industry, uh, please go to our website and select request advising or reach out to one of our advisors. Um, we're happy to talk with you. All of our services are no cost and confidential. That being said, I'm gonna to try today to offer you tactical action items, things that you can take home and start to execute right away. Uh, we're going to try to cover sort of a wide variety of industries, but that being said, it's really hard with the amount of people in the different industries that we talk to on these webinars to really touch, you know, to have every piece of, of insight that I offer you today be relevant to every business. So we will do our best. And of course, as Kelsey said, if you have questions as we go along, pop them in the chat. Um, I may get to them if they're, if they're, if I can see them in time and they're relevant to what I'm talking about at the moment, I will. Otherwise, I'll either get to them at the end, or if we do run out of time, there will be a follow-up email with a link to a recording of this webinar um, and any other relevant links to things that we talk about today. And I'll try to address any of the questions in that follow-up email as well. So first, just to recap, uh, about a month ago, we hosted a webinar on consumer behavior. So I'm not gonna spend a lot of time here. The, um, you are able to review the recording of that webinar if you weren't able to attend. But just in general, to touch on some of the key points that we established in that webinar. Um, the major, major takeaway was the, obviously as a result of the pandemic, major surge in e-commerce. So people are spending a lot more time on the internet, a lot more time on social media. They're bouncing between channels and across devices. So while they might be doing research on a laptop or a desktop, they're then going to purchase the product on the phone and, and following up with that purchase on a tablet. So they're bouncing around a lot. And people are also expecting solid customer service. They're expecting real-time customer service because we are all missing that human element of being out in the real world and interacting with people. Um, of course, safe shopping is a major, major behavior, behavioral item to note. Um, people are still very concerned with health metrics, the state of the pandemic. They're seeking contact with contactless options, both for payment and purchase. Um, so delivery, curbside, buy online, pick up and store. Basically, they want to shop in any way that keeps them safe and away from the public and preferably from their own couch if they can do that. Um, 
People are also trying new brands. So a survey we talked about in that webinar uh, stated that three quarters of shoppers through the pandemic have actually tried at least one new brand. Um, and so people are not necessarily, they're not necessarily loyal to Amazon anymore. They want to deal directly with local businesses. There's a big push to support small businesses and people are, are seeing better customer service from the local guys as well. So it actually gives small businesses a, a bit of an advantage in that sense. It's one of the behavior trends that works in your favor. Um, unfortunately, people are also very price conscious right now. So consumer confidence is still down. Even if people have been fortunate enough to keep their jobs through this pandemic, they're still nervous not knowing what's gonna happen with the state of the economy and the health metrics. So people are still being very conscious with how they're spending their money. Um, still a major focus on social responsibility, possibly because of the political climate we're in right now, especially young consumers are big into activism. So they're putting their money where their mouth is. Um, we talked about in the last webinar, 38% of Americans right now, including more than half of millennials are actually boycotting at least one product. And many people are boycotting more than one. So something worth noting. And as I mentioned, that right there is the link to the webinar recording. I'm sure we'll include it in the body of the follow-up email as well, but we do send these slides. So I want you to be able to go into the slide and click the, click the link if you need to. So we also, last time we talked, uh, you, you might recognize this slide. It's the same exact slide. I promise we're not gonna spend a lot of time here. Um, but just a reminder, because we're going to dig in a little bit deeper into loyalty and target markets. But I, in the last webinar, I challenged you all to define your target customer. So even if you're able to sell your product or service to just about anyone and everyone or a broad variety of people, I want you to think about who your most frequent, most loyal customers are and keep those people in mind as we go through this webinar and start to dig into how to how to please them the most. And so really think about them from a, um, a demographic standpoint. So who they are as a person, what are their habits, what are their behaviors, and probably most important, think about what they value and how has that changed since before the pandemic. So some surveys have been done recently that have really found um, that the businesses that really focused on loyalty, that understood who their customers are and what they valued, prior to the pandemic and had really established a strong customer base are the ones that have been able to successfully pivot what they're selling. Um, and this quote on the screen was actually from a, a nationwide article, but we actually at the University of Southern Maine, they did a state survey on businesses and how they were impacted by the pandemic and found the same results is that it's the businesses that had established a strong, solid customer base of loyal customers that found pivoting to be most successful. And that seems obvious um, if you think of, you know, comparing that to businesses that are based on more of a, sort of a trans transactional customers, but you'll see in a minute why I'm re-emphasizing this point. So you may be familiar with the 80-20 rule of thumb. So basically what this states is that in general across industries, 80% of sales can come from 20% of your customers. So again, it's all about loyalty and it's more important even now than ever. So it's always tempting for businesses to focus on a wide market, try to please everyone, try to have something for everyone and find new customers. And that's something I see a lot when I'm helping folks craft business plans to open new businesses. I say, who are your customers? And they say, well, we'll have something for everyone. And I always sort of stop them right there and say, no, 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 that's not what we want here. You don't wanna spend your energy trying to please everyone because I mean, we all know people are so very different. That's not possible. So instead I always urge people whether they're starting a new business or running an existing business to focus your energy on fully satisfying your existing customers and those existing customers that are your most frequent, most loyal customers. And think about not only how can you get them to buy more, how can you get them to you know, walk through the door and buy more often or more volume, but also think about how to get them to talk about you. So if you can encourage them to make referrals or give you testimonials or write reviews, how can you really stir up some user generated content um, and insert that into your marketing plan? 
So just briefly, let's talk about the market. And a lot of this you likely know already, but let's just highlight sort of what are the key differences in the holiday season of 2020 compared to past years. So obviously consumer behavior, like we talked about in the last webinar. Um, but I want you to recognize that there are both opportunities and threats relating to these changes in behavior. So from an opportunity standpoint, spending is actually up right now. Um, according to a, a visa study, retail sales in September saw a boost from previous months, obviously within the pandemic, but are also up 4% from September of last year. Um, and big thing that's notable is that consumers are still spending more on goods than on services. Um, there's also been an earlier start to the holiday season and spending on holiday related products. So you may have seen on, on social media and across, across channels that people are saying, okay, well, if you see, you know, if your neighbors are out decorating already, just, just let them be, just let them be happy. It's been such a crazy year. Let people do what they want to do. And I think because people are so ready to be done with 2020, they are starting, they're starting their, they're decorating and they're shopping a little bit early. So embrace that, you know, keep in mind that maybe you can launch those holiday sales or those marketing campaigns a little bit earlier than you might have, you know, you don't necessarily have to wait until after Thanksgiving to start talking about Christmas or New Year's. So that is one major difference about this year is that it's got an earlier start. Um, another advantage to changes in consumer behavior, another visa study found that 60% of American consumers intend to do the majority of their shopping with local retailers this year. And it's safe to assume that a big portion of that will be online. So that's a good sign is that people are looking to support small. They're looking to get out there. They understand the impact that the pandemic has had on small businesses. So it's okay to capitalize on that. It's okay to, you know, encourage people to support local as you should always do anyway. Um, some of the threats relating to consumer behavior. So obviously the health metrics, we don't know what's gonna happen there. The general concern for safety. And of course the fact that folks are price conscious right now because of that uncertainty. The governmental, governmental assistance is different this year. So the election is over now. We're expecting to see some bills come through the Fed that offer some more assistance to small businesses, but also there's been this talk about maybe another stimulus check. I have no idea. I have no insider knowledge on that, whether that's gonna happen or not. All I know is that after the election, now once we're sort of through the weeds, we're likely to see some more of those things come down the pipeline at the federal level. So keep your eyes open for that and be ready. So if there is another stimulus check, think about what your customers are gonna be doing with that stimulus check. And if it's a good, you know, the whole point of it is to spend it. So if it's a good time to launch a marketing campaign, if that does come out. So keep an eye on what comes down from the federal um, pipeline as you're planning your holiday marketing. Federal and state mandates are obviously different this year. So this is where we sort of take a more negative turn. So obviously it's more expensive for businesses to operate this year. Um, having to limit numbers of folks in stores, requiring additional staff and time for cleaning um, in general operations are more expensive. So again, you likely know that, but this is just sort of stating the obvious, pointing out the, the state of the market this year. So what's the first thing you should do to start to handle this different, for better, for worse market that we're looking at. Consider the timing and be, be real about it. So it's November 10th. It may seem like we've got time before the holidays hit, but, but that's not a lot of time. They're gonna sneak up on us. So I'm encouraging you, I'm hoping that after this webinar, you'll have taken a lot of notes. You'll be excited. Um, You'll be ready to implement some new strategies and whatnot, but be real with what you have time to do and what you will do between now and say Thanksgiving or Black Friday or Christmas or New Year's. Um, really set smart goals. So don't, you know, get too crazy and then all of a sudden realize, oh, hey, it's, you know, December 23rd and I haven't done anything I said I was going to do on November 10th. Um, so it, Two and a half weeks, let's say, for example, if you're in the food service business and you're selling pies for Thanksgiving. So you're two and a half weeks until Thanksgiving right now. What, what can you do to encourage people to buy more pies? It may be too late. You know, if you don't have a website, if you don't have, um, it, it, 
huge social media following, it may be to, in two and a half weeks, you can't build that, you can't be found on Google, you can't necessarily amp up your social media presence. Um, I shouldn't say can't, you can certainly do things on social media, you're not out of time for that. But realistically, what are your goals in the next two and a half weeks? I would say you can remind people to buy their pies, you can make it convenient for them, you can supply last minute pies if that's a need, um, maybe offer a deal, Maybe there's something, if somebody's already put in an order, can you encourage them to make that order bigger? Maybe you've got some sort of new product you'd like to introduce and you're trying to um, sell samples at half price. And so everyone that buys a pie gets a, you also get a dozen of our rolls that are something new on our menu. So really be realistic about timing and think about what you can do between now and then. And recognize that you may have some ideas of some marketing things you're gonna implement and it may need to wait until after the first of the year because you really need to prioritize right now what's going to make you the most for the holiday season. So I understand that the internet can be a crazy place. And as I just said, we're on a very sort of limited timetable right now. So if you don't have a website, if you don't have a bunch of social media pages and you don't have an updated, you know, you don't have a following, you don't update things regularly, you're new to this, that's fine. You can still sell online even if you have nothing already, you can still sell online. And so this slide is sort of the quick and dirty ways to, to do that, the easiest ways to get online in a short period of time. Um, so first, and again, I know Facebook is not necessarily a comfortable place for a lot of people either, but you don't need to be an expert. You don't need to have a crazy active um, personal page to start a business page or to start joining some of these um, Facebook groups relating to your industry. Um, I would say if you do join a group, make sure that you know what the rules are. So some of, for example, the Bangor area restaurants and foodies group, it's not intended for you to sell product. You know, they don't want you selling your, your restaurants, uh, homemade syrups or whatnot. They don't want you to sell. So they, I think one of their rules is that once a week you can post a marketing message on their page. So make sure you follow the rules or the administrators will definitely kick you out of the group. Um, and explore, you know, think about where your customers are and where are they gonna find you and see if you can join a group that puts you in front of some of them. Um, Facebook Marketplace, typically a good option for personal sellers as opposed to business sellers, but that doesn't mean you can't use it too, depending on what you're selling. Uh, you do have to be careful. It's typically more of the meet me in the parking lot and exchange the money and I'll give you the goods. So it's definitely more, um, it's risky in that sense, it's less, less systematic. Uh, but if it's, if it's your only option to get your product or service online to let people know what you're doing, it's a quick and dirty way to do it. Etsy is also a good quick option, relatively easy to get up and started there. And same with Instagram, especially if you already have a page, you're already, if whatever you're selling, be it a product or a service is very visual. Instagram's a great place to be anyway, but now you can also sell your products from there. Um, so those are some social media platforms that you could hop on pretty quickly, not, you know, not pay a fee initially, but pay per transaction. So that's always nice. So if you don't sell anything, it doesn't cost you a dime. Um, and then I did put PayPal and Square contactless payments on the slide. There are not necessarily ways to get online, but if you have a customer base, let's say your customers call you or they email you or they, you know, you have some way that you keep in touch with them that isn't a social media page or a website. There's no reason now that you can't offer them contact, contactless payment that you can't accept, you know, cards instead of cash. Um, PayPal and Square are, again, free to join. Uh, you pay for transactions. So you pay every time you swipe someone's card. But there's no reason that, you know, you can't Everyone, I feel like if you don't have another way of taking online payments, you should have a square reader on hand um, because you don't pay a dime for it until you swipe. So again, these are the quickest, quick and dirty ways to get online and start selling between now and the holidays. The next sort of level up, and some of these things may be things that you explore after the holidays, um, but again, relatively quick, setting up a Google My Business page, um, it's, that really is something you could do quickly. I didn't put it on the last side, the last slide because it's not a way to sell product, but it's something that you should just generally have for your online presence anyway. Um, and again, 
a business advisor can walk you through how to do that if you're not familiar with it. Um, email marketing using something like constant contact, another good way to keep in touch with your customers if you're not super comfortable with the internet. Um, if you can get yourself an email list and regularly keep in touch with people. If you already had it, it would be a great opportunity now to shoot out a holiday message. Um, but these are things that you can start to do now to, to think about next year. Squarespace and Shopify, other good um, ways to build a quick website and sell online. Um, and GoDaddy as well. And I point out GoDaddy because New Ventures Maine actually has a, a program that can get you, I think it's a year of web hosting. Um, if you take their creating your web presence class, which is, you know, hugely beneficial anyway, but it's also another, it saves you some money and gets you online. Now, the reason I don't have Amazon on either one of these slides, um, obviously a lot of people are on Amazon. A lot of people do a lot of shopping on Amazon, but it is not necessarily a quick and dirty way to start. It's a lot more difficult. It's got a steeper learning curve. I've had people say that it's almost like selling on Amazon is almost like a full-time job in and of itself. Um, doesn't mean you shouldn't explore it if it's a good avenue. It uh, doesn't mean it isn't something you could look at after the holidays, um, but I'm just warning you, it's not necessarily a quick and easy way. So again, going back to setting reasonable attainable goals in the short period of time that you have to capitalize on 2020 holiday season. Sorry, I've been slow to change my slides. I click and it's like, there's this awkward delay. <laughs> All right, so what, what can you do about it? So this is where we get down to sort of the meat of this webinar. We're no longer sort of analyzing the market. We're not talking as much about, you know, your target market, but we're talking about what can you start to do right now to capitalize on the holiday season. So first off, I know that your businesses are not Apple or Coca-Cola. And it was one of my biggest pet peeves in business school when strategy discussion always used these big businesses as examples. Um, because I was like, well, no, I don't want to, I'm not the CEO of Apple. I want to run a small business. So why are you, why are you always talking to me about Apple? Um, but I'm going to challenge you to imagine how you could use their big potato marketing success in small potato ways. So the big thing here, think like your customer and specifically think like your customer right now in COVID times. Some of you may have seen some recent Coca-Cola commercials that came out that really show, they show families gathering at the dinner table and the whole thing, you see on the screen, together tastes better. Think about, it. they're selling soda. Do you really think that drinking Coke makes families gather at the dinner table and, and talk about their days? Do you really think it brings them more together? No, it doesn't. It's, it's soda. It has nothing to do with that. But in a time where people, their customers were feeling so desperate for support and connection because they were quarantined, they weren't out in the world, they weren't talking to people every day, they were just with their family. Coke paired their product with that feeling of togetherness. And they, and they came out with these commercials and, and you know, visual images of families gathering drinking Coke, and it made their customers feel something. And so they recognized that they weren't selling a product, they were selling a feeling. So let's, let's dig into that a little bit deeper and talk about some more companies that recognized what their customers really really valued, and it isn't necessarily what they're purchasing. So we've got a short video, and if you've seen this before, great. If not, um, enjoy. This is, here we go. I'm gonna pause it for a second. Um, I just wanna confirm that that sound is working. If anybody, just post in the comments if you can't hear hey, Allison. Yeah. There's actually a button that you need to click, so you might need to unshare your screen. And then when you go to share your screen again, there's a button on the left that says uh, share computer sounds, we discovered. Oh, thank you. Oh, you learned yeah, here. that was a really fun lesson. Everyone, if you ever need to share a video, that's your fun tip for today. When you go to share your screen, there's a button that asks you if you want to include the sound. Okay, I think I, I think I might have, oh, here we go. Yep, share computer scout sound, look at that. Jen and I were looking for that button very hard a few weeks ago. <laughs> okay, so let's try this again though. Please post in the comments if you guys can't hear it or just shout at me. No, we're good. Good. 
Here's to the crazy ones. The misfits. The rebels. The troublemakers. The round pegs in the square holes. The ones who see things differently. They're not fond of rules, and they have no respect for the status quo. You can quote them, disagree with them, glorify or vilify them. About the only thing you can't do is ignore them. Because they change things. They push the human race forward. And while some may see them as the crazy ones, we see genius. Because the people who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones who do. So what is really magical about that Apple commercial is, is not the, you know, is not the words. It's not the fact that it shows a lot of really, really amazing people. It's the fact that they don't, there's not a single mention of their product. There's not a visual that shows anything to do with technology. They aren't trying to sell you a, a, a watch or a phone. Um, they're trying to sell you a feeling. So that Think Different campaign really celebrates the, the soul of the Apple brand, that creative people with passion can change the world. And they recognize that their customers didn't want to buy a phone. They didn't want to buy a laptop. If they did, they could go anywhere. They could go to Dell. They could go to, you know, HP. How could they get them to come to Apple? By, by making it seem like if you bought an Apple, it would inspire you to change the world. Um, it's a stretch, but look at how successful Apple has been. And this ad campaign, I don't have any statistics, but I was reading about it when I was trying to find this clip and it was, it was incredibly successful. Um, please note, I'm not telling you to come up with a campaign and not showcase your product or service. Apple has the wonderful distinction of being able to show that little Apple logo and everyone instantly knows who they are. Um, that's not what I'm saying here. What I'm saying is think about what your customers value, what they want and need beyond the product and how can you satisfy that? Um, so for example, right now, uh, as we still navigate the pandemic, some people are looking for, they're looking for normalcy. They're looking for comfort or stress relief. Um, maybe they want interaction. Maybe they want togetherness or to feel like they fit in. Um, some products really capitalize on the fact that people like to feel nostalgic. Um, so can buying from you really make them feel something? And what is it that you're actually selling them? So for example, if you're, if you're a yoga studio, you're not selling yoga classes. You're not teaching them how to do yoga. You're not even at this point necessarily selling them health and fitness. Um, you're not selling a physical product. You're selling them a feeling. You're selling them a chance to get out of the house. You're selling them a way to relax, um, something to look forward to, something to start their day or end their day with, you're selling them tranquility. And so if you can recognize what they're, why they're buying from you, whether it's a product or a service, you can start to tailor your offerings to satisfy them in different ways that spin off of that original value offering. And so one more example, again, like I said, I hated when business school uses, use these big examples. So let me bring it down a little bit more local. So the whole point is to talk about asking why your customers buy from you. So I play this little game with myself called what I did wrong when I owned my small business and how I would do it differently now. And so part of it is self-inflicted punishment, but most of it is I don't feel like I have any business advising entrepreneurs if I can't admit my past issues and figure out a way to solve them. So on the screen is a picture of a smoothie bowl. Um, it's actually not the kind of smoothie bowl that was what I'm going to talk about now, but um, the acai bowl became something in my bakery that I sold a lot of. And to be honest, I hated when people ordered it because it took me a long time to make it and my margins were very slim. When I put it on the menu, it was meant to be a draw. It was meant to be something visual that I could put um, you know, some imagery with colors that would make people come into the shop and think they wanted it and try something, you know, give us a try. 
and learned that they liked our atmosphere, they liked my menu, they liked the prices, but I figured it wouldn't be something they'd order every day. I figured they'd come in and try it, or maybe it would just get them through the door, and then they'd come in and get coffee or a sandwich or soup or something. But what I found, come to find out, looking at the numbers, um, but also from my time at the front counter, I knew that we were selling a lot of them and people were buying them every day um, or at least multiple times a week. So what I didn't do that I should have done was started to figure out why people were buying them. So they weren't, well, I used to speculate, okay, so why, why do people buy them? Is it because they perceived them as being healthy? Is it because they wanted to feel like they were eating dessert for lunch or because it was filling, because it was cold, because it was unique? Was it because it was a status symbol, um, something they could put on their Instagram page and, and make it look like they eat in really unique places, you know, make them pretend that they're in New York City when they're actually eating in Birmingham? I don't know. Those were all things I could speculate. Um, what, what I could have done if I started to dig into that and actually ask why so I could have added more menu items similar to that. If I figured out that the reason they wanted to buy them was because they were healthy, I could have added more colorful, healthy menu items. Um, that's kind of a stretch, but you know what I mean. Um, if, so what, one thing I sort of established was it, that I, I figured out that it wasn't because they were cheap, because they weren't the cheapest item on the menu by all means. So, I could have raised my prices, you know, increased the margin on that item. Once I found that it wasn't just a, a loss leader, I should have raised the prices. Um, I could have come up with an easier way to make them. So that way it didn't take me, you know, five minutes and interrupt the flow of work every time somebody ordered them. So those were some things that I could have done had I taken the time to ask why. So what else, what can you do right now, basically? What, what can you do coming into the holiday season? You can increase the perception of value of your product or service. Um, and alongside that, sometimes that means increasing price as well. So for, think about it. Why are you willing to pay $6 for a hot dog at a baseball game? <laughs> what would you do if you went to a convenience store and they also tried to sell you a hot dog for $6? It's, it's the same hot dog, but you'd be, you'd be very irritated. So baseball games provide increased perception of value of that hot dog because of scarcity. So because you can't, you can't bring your own food in, it's your only option. So there's an increased perception that value is worth, that hot dog is worth more to you. It's worth $6 at a baseball game where it was only worth 50 cents at a convenience store. Um, similar to the way Apple's campaign really had nothing to do, I shouldn't say nothing to do, but very little to do with their actual product. North Face has always been very good at doing this in marketing. So, you know, why are you spending $50 for a fleece at North Face that you could buy for $10, you know, um, on Amazon or at Walmart? It's because of the North Face brand. It's because the brand itself has increased your perception of the value of their products. Um, North Face had a really successful advertising campaign that was so surrounded um, exploring and going to unique places. And it was always showing people wearing North Face brands out hiking and ice climbing, doing all these really interesting things. And they really hardly showed you the product at all. And there was nothing to indicate that the, the value was more than any other fleece on the market, but it showed the people out there exploring. And it made you feel like if you bought North Face, you'd fit in with that crowd. Like that was you, that was part of your identity. And so it made you willing to spend more money on North Face. Now, why do I have a picture of, of McDonald's French fries on the screen? McDonald's increases their value perception in a very different way. So they don't try to be the, the best, but they try to be the most consistent. So it's the reason why if you go out of town, instead of shop, you know, instead of eating at a local restaurant, you go to a McDonald's because people like to know what to expect and they always know what to expect at McDonald's. Whether it's you know good or bad, they know what to expect. And so that's another way that people can see the value in your product or service is that if they used to go to you before the pandemic and they come to you now, they're always going to know what they're going to get from you. So what else can you do? Um, obviously with e-commerce on the rise, one of the major drivers of folks making decisions to buy online from one site over another is the offer of free shipping. And it's amazing. It all comes back to value perception is because people don't like to pay for shipping because they don't 
they don't feel like there's value. It's not something they can hold. They don't feel, they, they notice if they don't have it, that's for sure, but they don't see the value in having it. Um, it's all, and at this point, because of Amazon, we almost take advantage of free shipping. Now, coming into this holiday season, postal rates are going up. Free shipping is not cheap for small businesses, that's for sure. Um, so some creative solutions that some retail businesses have come up with are partnering or are selling in larger quantities. So instead of selling, you know, one item, selling three and giving free shipping for larger quantities, selling it in packs as opposed to just an individual item. Um, I've seen small businesses partner with other small businesses. So if your neighbor sells a product that's also complementary to what you sell, you know, if you make homemade jam and your neighbor sells, makes, um, I don't know, tourist uh, magnets, something, you know, that was a terrible example, but can you partner with them? So can you ship to the same place and save yourself shipping costs? Um, so local partnerships, because again, every small business out there is sort of looking for ways to save money, looking for ways to increase sales. So can you partner with those folks that aren't your competitors, but may sell similar um, complementary products. Um, some businesses are creating ways for their customers to come up with gift lists or wish lists. So we've seen online, um, you know, on Amazon, you come up with your wish list and if somebody puts something on there, Amazon and the trusty commercials that come alongside of the, alongside your search box, they remind you that you put that on your wish list. So is there a way that you can come up with a gift list or wish list for your customers and then remind them of those things as they go along? Um, customer service is another wonderful way to increase the perception of value. So Supercuts, I think it is, offers the hot towel refresher. So if you get a haircut, or I think it's I'm not sure if it's for men only, but they, they offer you a hot towel and it costs them next to nothing. It takes, you know, a minute for them to do, to pop a what, towel in the microwave and give it to you, but it makes all the difference. It makes people feel special. Um, so it increases their perception of the value of that service. Um, and we talked earlier about consumer behavior, um, about real-time customer service. And so again, now's the time to make sure that people are, are getting to you and that you're quick to respond. So considering a chat bot um, or on your Facebook page, you can see the example on the screen from Honest Soul Yoga. You can um, set your messenger to have some auto replies to some of the most common questions. So that's something quick and easy to do that really makes your customers feel like you're responsive to them, even if you know it doesn't require any extra time on your part once you get it set up. Um, and the last major thing you can do, um, I shouldn't say it's the last major thing, it's the last major suggestion I have as far as increasing value perception. Um, delivery curbside pickup is huge. So from May to August this year, uh, according to Shopify, online shoppers spent 23% more when choosing local pickup or delivery. So if it's at all possible for you to do that, whether it's just curbside or actual delivery, um, dealing with that stuff in-house can save you a lot of shipping costs for sure and make a big difference customer service wise. So what else can you be doing right now? And I know we've harped on you about this in other webinars, but communicate, communicate, communicate. So the big thing is make sure everything is updated. Uh, make sure your Google My Business, your website, your social media pages are all up to date. The hours are accurate, your location and offerings and accessibility. Um, also what you're doing as far as COVID practices and safety. So customers wanna know, you know, can I walk into your store? Uh, am I gonna have to wait outside? Are you only doing curbside pickup? So make sure that is very easy for people to know um, on your online sites. Um, post regularly. So schedule posts ahead of time. If you have to, um, maybe you have an employee whose hours have been cut because demand has been down and maybe that's something, a task that you can delegate to them. And if you aren't keeping up to date with, with one of your social media pages or your website, well, figure out, figure out why, but also consider deleting it. So, you know, if you've got a blog on your website and the last time you posted to that blog was April and you have no intention of going back to it, take it down. It, it doesn't, it makes you look less relevant it, it, not only to the internet, search engines, but also to your customers if they see that. Um, if you sell online and ship, 
Also make sure that your customers know about deadlines, about when they need to order their products by to receive those items by the holidays. And that might take some research on your end as we come into the uncertain busy season, trying to figure out how long carriers are gonna to take to get things places, if there are gonna be delays. Um, so make sure you let people know. Um, there's nothing worse than somebody thinking they're gonna get the product by Christmas, but then not getting it until the 27th. Um, so do the research if you need to and figure out what you need to tell your customers. Streamline. So we talked about how people are shopping. They're shopping a lot. They're mobile shopping. They're shopping on tablets, on different devices, on laptops. Make sure that your communication is streamlined across, across devices and across your different um, you know, social media channels or your website. Doesn't mean use the same pictures or the same content over and over again, but make sure if you're using certain language to communicate what you do, use similar words across all channels. Um, if you're posting images you know, of your logo, use the same color scheme so that people know it's you. Um, so streamline that communication. Be transparent about what you're doing to make sure that their shopping experiences are safe. So at the beginning of the pandemic, businesses were really good at communicating their, their cleaning practices and their social distancing and their policies. But I found it's kind of, every, everyone's gotten lax because they, they think that the customer doesn't need to hear that. But we're coming into a busy season again. And of course, with the recent um, surge in COVID cases, your customers want to be reminded that you're still doing those things. You're still taking it seriously um, and doing what you can to make sure that their experience is safe if they are shopping in person. Um, we also talked in our consumer behavior webinar about um, inclusive and diverse marketing. So across all industries, uh, particularly in health and beauty, all female shoppers feel more comfortable responding to advertising that is diverse and inclusive. So just make sure that your imaging is diverse and inclusive. Um, and that being said, 92% of consumers trust user-generated content like reviews, endorsements, or testimonials more than they trust traditional advertising. So it goes back to, can you get your loyal customers to talk about you? Um, can you get them to, you know, can you use images, audio, or quotes from them in your advertising with their permission? Um, and it may also be an opportunity to showcase the diversity or inclusion of your customer base. And lastly, stay in touch. So the holidays are a great excuse to just touch base with your customers. Um, a great chance to say hello to them without necessarily trying to sell them something, which, which goes a long way. Um, a customer will trust a company more if they feel like that company cares about them and that every interaction you have with them isn't just you trying to sell something with them or you doing a transaction. So I, the holidays are a great time to reach out and just, you know, wish them the best, let them know you're thinking of them. Um, and, you know, sort of secret agenda is reminding them that you exist and hopefully encouraging they'll then shop with you. Um, emails are wonderful, but handwritten notes sent snail mail are light years above emails. It's not cheap. Um, it's why maybe choosing your most loyal customers or your top spenders uh, depending on how large your customer list is, maybe you can sell it, send, send letters to a big portion of your list. But um, if there's any way you can come up with handwritten, you know, holiday notes or thank you notes to your customers, it will certainly make you stand out. I know I can count on one hand the number of handwritten Christmas cards I got from companies last year. And companies and some of, of my clients and I can remember them. I remember who they are and I'm not gonna list them here because of confidentiality, but I remember that. And so it, it is memorable. And here we are, you know, after a pandemic and it's been 11 months and I still remember that. So it goes a long way. So briefly, we're gonna to touch on numbers. I know numbers can be the most um, dreadful topic to talk about and this is marketing webinar. So we're not gonna dig in, but I just wanna point out there are four ways to increase profits. You can raise your price, you can sell more of something, you can sell something more often, or you can decrease your costs. So think about each of those options and think about which of those options is the most flexible for you right now. For example, decrease overheads or decreasing your costs, that's likely not the most flexible option. Maybe it is, um, but I'm thinking most of you where we've been in this pandemic long enough, 
you've likely done what you can to trim the fat. You've likely tried to figure out every way to reduce your overhead. So it, that may not be. Um, the one I want to highlight, we're going to talk a little bit more about is, is increased price, because that may be if you're increasing the perception of value of your product or service, you need to increase the price to go along with that. So one more thing about numbers, um, basically what can you do when you start to look at those different options? So evaluating your pricing. So making sure that you're making enough money on each sale. And that, that's sort of, that's a big question I ask my clients as a, lot, a lot is how much are you making on each sale? And don't be ashamed if you can't answer that question because many, many small business owners, they price based on what they believe their customers will spend and relate it to competition and disposable income. And that's a great starting strategy. It's a great way to price. You wanna make sure that your customers can afford it um, and that they aren't buy gonna buy it from someone else cheaper if there isn't, if you aren't offering them something more, more value. Um, but if you aren't making enough money on each sale, it doesn't matter if you sell one unit or a million units, um, you're not gonna make any money. So it is important to know how much of each unit you sell you get to take home. Um, it also, knowing, understanding, you know, your price in relation to costs, you can start to push your higher margin items. So again, once I found out that I was selling far more smoothie bowls than, you know, breakfast sandwiches, which had a higher margin, I could have raised the price of those smoothie bowls and actually been making a greater contribution margin on each item I was selling. Um, you can also, as far as playing with numbers, recognizing your sales, you can figure out if you need to change your days and hours that you're open to save payroll costs, for example. Um, or maybe it's worth it for you to close for a week. So I know when I had my business, we were always very slow the week after Christmas. Um, and I could have certainly used a week to decompress, uh, give my employees a week off, give myself a week off, shut down the ovens, save a little bit on utilities, and my customers likely wouldn't have missed me. So in knowing the sale numbers, I could have made those decisions um, more effectively. So last, what are sort of some of the final takeaways? Um, except uncertainty. And I know that's, that's a hard, it's hard for to swallow and it's un, unsatisfying, but it's the truth of the matter is that we're coming to a holiday season that nobody knows what to expect. And it is what it is. Um, we're all trying to cut our losses from what's been a crazy year and we're going to do our best. Um, but it, it's definitely going to be an uncertain time. Focus on what your customers want, need, and value. So again, knowing who your customers are and what, why they actually buy from you instead of the alternative. Um, look at your numbers and let them help you decide which moves to make, whether it's moving prices around, moving your hours around, closing a couple of days a week, adjusting your payroll. Um, let the numbers do some of that talking for you. Uh, communicate intelligently. Obviously communicate with employees and vendors, but in particular from a marketing standpoint, make sure you're communicating with your customers through the holiday season. And don't be afraid of change. So I put the picture on the screen because I don't wanna have to say the world, word that we're all tired of, of hearing. And if any of you are Friends fans, you know that as they're trying to get the couch up the stairs, they're shouting pivot. Um, <laughs> and so I would just say, don't be afraid to pivot, whether it's because you need to or because the numbers say that it makes sense, don't be afraid to do that. Um, change can be good and sometimes necessary. So, that is all I have. Um, again, please reach out to us for one-on-one -on -one advising. If we can dig in deeper uh, to your industry or your business or talk about your customers specifically, we try to keep these webinars pretty broad. So we're happy to dig in a little bit deeper. Um, oops, I did not mean for that to go away, but let me stop sharing. Maybe I'll bring my video back on and address a few questions. We got just a few minutes here. And hopefully bringing my video back on doesn't harm my bandwidth. So let me know if my sound goes crazy on us. Um, just looking, I saw a, let's see, I see a lot of you introducing yourself in the chat. That is wonderful. Never be afraid in these webinars to take it as a marketing opportunity for your business. So letting people know who you are and what you sell. Um, let's see. 
So recommendations for encouraging people to shop local. That's a good question. Um, I'd like to think that it's great that there are these sort of broader campaigns to support small businesses. It, it kind of takes some of the load off the small business owners when you've got um, you know, the local chambers of commerce and whatnot touting support small business. Um, as far as some things that the business owner can do to encourage support small, small business, um, I would say, I mean, sharing in your marketing efforts, sharing some of that imagery that you see from these, that these people are coming out with support small business, reminding your customers to do that um, and also connecting with them on a human level. So letting them know, you know, within reason and remaining professional, but introducing yourself. So putting a human face to your business and reminding them like, you know, hey, my name's Allison Lane and I own this business. Um, oh, and here's an image, here's a picture of my dog and my husband and really putting, you know, humanizing your marketing strategy. So that way they know that there's a real human face. It's not some CEO. It's, it's, it's a real person with a real family. And, and this is what them supporting you is actually supporting. I'll jump in here. Also, I've seen a lot of overlap with, um, initiatives that businesses are taking. So if it's a give back program, if it's a scholarship, anything that you're doing that's really impacting the community positively, talk about it. Be like, when you buy from this small business, you're not only supporting me and my family, but you're supporting initiatives like X, Y, and Z. Um, so definitely showcasing any uh, ex extra effort that you're putting in to outside uh, assistance within the community. Don't be afraid to, to brag it up a little bit. It's, it's letting people know what you're doing and where their money is going. I see Shannon Kinney is on the call. Hi, Shannon. So Shannon Oak owns Dream Local Digital in Portland, a wonderful digital marketing agency. We've done some collaboration webinars with her about social media. And if anybody wants to know more about um, expanding, enhancing their social media content, or knowing what channels to put that on. The webinars, I, I shared them broadly with my clients, that Shan, the webinars that Shannon did with us because those are wonderful. So please let us know if you'd like the link to those. Um, and she says, if anyone wants help with Amazon, let her know. So again, Amazon, yeah, is a whole different animal. I can't say I'm personally very familiar with it, um, but it's a whole, whole nother ball game. Um, any other questions? I'm not seeing anything else in the chat. So I'll sort of do a, a last call for questions. I know there's a lot to digest here. And again, I'll encourage you to reach out, um, check out our website, mainesbdc.org. Um, if you would like to get some one-on-one -on -one advising to go into a little bit more detail. Um, we've also recently launched our new um, recovery center, relaunch and recovery center, I think is what it is. Um, where we're really trying to come up with resources, uh, COVID-related resources to help you through the pandemic and assessing your needs and figuring out specifically what it is that we can do for you. Oh, and Kelsey's put the links in the chat for us. Thank you, Kelsey. So, oh, Allison. So I'm not familiar with WooCommerce. Updating beyond my skill set. Ah, Shannon can help. <laughs> so yeah, if, if you're using a system, if, they, if you want to continue to use a system that is beyond your area of expertise, it, it may require reaching out to a professional, a marketing agency such as Shannon. Um, or, you know, and, and if we, and we're happy to conduct an, you know, an advising session with you and chat about it as well, we may also explore what's, you know, why, why WooCommerce, what are the other options, if there's another one that, that's easier to manage um, that might be worth switching to. Again, I know nothing about WooCommerce, so I feel safe saying that. So Shannon says WooCommerce rocks, but you have to keep up with software updates or it starts getting buggy. Yeah, I love technology. All right. Well, we, so you'll all be receiving a follow-up email from Kelsey with the recording to this um, and any other relevant information, you'll get the slides and please don't hesitate to reach out if questions come up once you've sort of digested the information.
or if you do want to receive some one-on-one -on -one advising, we're happy to help. But thank you all for hopping on today. We appreciate your time and best of luck through the holiday season. <laughs>